On this episode, we head to the mountains with a 2021 Toyota 4Runner Trail Edition and the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon Diesel. It's a winter adventure on this episode of Driving Sports TV. This is a 2021 Toyota 4Runner Trail Edition. Based on the SR5 trim level, it adds some nice extras like a roof rack and a cooler. The Trail Edition we're testing also arrived with a TRD skid plate and some extra add-ons. Price as we have it here, $43,871 US dollars, including destination. Under the hood is a 4-liter V6 that takes standard petrol. It produces 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque, plus it can tow up to 5,000 pounds. If you want to see a full review of this vehicle, we posted it last week on our channel. Our mission today is to travel deep into the Cascade Mountains to find the Evergreen Lookout. It's an old observation tower at about 5,000 feet, somewhere near Stevens Pass. But with the temperatures dropping and a weather front moving in, with every passing minute, it's looking less likely that we'll make it to our destination. But today I'm not alone. I have crew with me who are going to be chasing in this 2021 Jeep Rubicon, thank you, diesel edition. By the way, did I mention the temperature just dropped like 10 degrees? This is the Gladiator Rubicon, which means that it has a five-foot truck bed. It can seat five and is loaded with off-road ready hardware. Under the hood is a three-liter eco-diesel engine that produces 260 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. Towing capacity is 6,500 pounds. Price as you see it here, 67,130 US dollars. We're not sure what we're going to encounter on today's journey, but both the Forerunner and Gladiator have solid off-road bonafides. We will pay attention to fuel economy, as the Gladiator diesel claims a combined EPA rating of 24 miles to the gallon, and the Forerunner only 17. We'll also look at the supplied tires. The Forerunner comes standard with all seasons that, as we showed in the previous episode, were pretty bad in the snow, essentially making change a requirement. But what about the Gladiator's 33-inch mud terrain tires? We'll try them out and see which is a better setup for folks that don't want to buy into dedicated snow tires. With the vehicles sorted and snow already starting to fall in the higher elevations, we headed into the mountains to see what we could learn about these rigs on an unpredictable midwinter outing. So we are, of course, driving up into the Cascade Mountains and we're going to someplace new. Today, instead of just going up to the river, crossing, whatnot, off of I-90, uh, we're going down Highway 2 and into the mountains through the Beckler Road access. The goal this time is to get to Evergreen Lookout. However, the weather has turned really, really bad. It is not only cold, it's very wet uh, and windy. These are all the things that you don't really want when you're venturing into the forest because you know you can get a lot of debris on the roads trees can fall especially in very moist windy conditions we do have all the stuff we need to be successful if nature doesn't get really really harsh but it's the mountains who knows what's going to happen what's your cruising mpgs like 30.7 the forerunner here is getting 21.4 so far so win for the diesel the Forerunner here on the freeway is, you know, not bad driving experience. It is a body on frame, so you get a little bit more bounce and roll than you would get in a unibody. It does have adaptive cruise control, which is very much appreciated. It does not have automatic steering, so it is missing that feature uh, that you do get on a lot of crossovers starting at about the same price point. The head unit has been upgraded and it is looking pretty nice. It has Apple CarPlay and all the regular features like the XM radio and whatnot. And uh, we are starting to get snow now. So now we have snow, rain, and wind here in the Cascade Mountains. Just another Wednesday. Rain has turned to snow and it is blanketing the highway. We are gonna turn off the highway here in just a few minutes and onto a forest road. So the weather forecast was for roughly five inches of snow up here. Um, if that's all we have on the road, we should be fine today. However, these are the mountains. There can be very much localized amounts of snow. Could easily be a foot or two, uh, depending on where we're heading and how much snow accumulation was still there from last time it snowed, which was um, a week or so ago. 
I've actually never been on this road beyond the Beckler River Road. Um, we're going to go all the way to Jack Pass, and then from Jack Pass, we break off on a spur up to Evergreen Lookout. So it should be interesting. Jack Pass is at about 2,800 feet, and then from there, we climb all the way to about 4,500 feet, which is the same altitude roughly as Stevens Pass, which is a very popular ski area and is currently advising traction tires only. So there should be quite a bit of snow up there actually. Uh, but has it had an opportunity for a lot of accumulation yet? That I don't know. What's your average MPG looking like? 27.1 as of 22 minutes on the trip. Cool. Okay, so I'm at uh, 20 miles to the gallon even. Driving position, the seats aren't the most comfortable. I'm getting a little dead spot right in the back middle and actually under my legs. I have to kind of keep doing ankle circles because uh, I'm getting a little tired. I've been on the road now for about an hour. Of course, every body is different. So what doesn't work for me may work for you. I'm six foot one. I have legs and torso proportionate. Uh, a lot of people have longer legs than torso. So again, ratios don't always work out to be the same for everybody. I'm looking at getting a Forerunner for myself again. I used to have one. It was a 96. Um, I had it a few years ago. It actually appeared on some episodes of the show early on. I think I'm definitely leaning towards the TRD Off-Road Premium, and I definitely would want to go with Premium for the reason of the fact that it actually has the Softex materials on the seats. I have that same type of material, they call it StarTex in the Subaru, and I really like it. Uh, I think that it would be great to have it in the 4Runner as well. And then of course you get the keyless start and keyless entry, uh, which when you're getting in and out of a vehicle on a production, sometimes you know around other people, bystanders and whatnot, you kind of want to be able to lock your vehicle without having to get the key out, hit the button and all that stuff. Uh, so for me, that makes it worthwhile. I don't think I'm going to go as high as the TRD Pro because I just don't think that is absolutely necessary. The TRD Pro is great, but they do ask a lot of money for it. It starts at around 50 grand and you do get a lot of stuff for that. However, I think even for our productions and using it as a production rig, just not really necessary because most of the time it's going to just need to keep up with crossovers, which, you know, crossovers can't do very much. Now, the tires we're on today are all season radials. They are not ideal. I did bring chains with me if things get sticky, however. The Jeep Gladiator that we have chasing us is on all terrains, and all terrains are okay for snow. They're not great, though. So it'll be interesting to see just how well they do in the soft stuff. Like, will they just turn into rocks, or will they actually still be usable? So that's not the point of this video, but it's kind of interesting, you know? All seasons plus chains versus all terrains. I'm guessing nobody else is going to be going out to Evergreen Lookout today. I think you have to be kind of crazy to do that in weather like this. But it was on the schedule, so we're going to do it. It's times like this where I think, you know, I'd much rather have an SUV than a truck because everything that I have in the cab with me in the back there is nice, warm, and dry. Uh, if it was in the truck bed, it would be cold, wet, and covered in ice. So yeah, yay for SUVs. I was kind of afraid of this slowdown here as people are getting close to the climb for Stevens Pass. We're going to pull off before the climb uh, because we're going to be following a river the other direction. But there are clearly a lot of people going out of town for New Year's Eve, which is tomorrow night as we're filming this. You won't see this video until into 2021, if we survive the transition, that is. Um, but if we don't survive the transition, then you won't care about this video, I'm sure. Okay. Are we there? Ooh, that's turning to ice now. I just put on a little throttle and it is slickery. I'm going to go ahead and switch into four high. Okay, let's turn into Beckler and see what we got here. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Appreciate it. And in we go. Okay, now we're going down Beckler with a lovely soft padding of probably about, you know, two, three inches. It's pretty nice here. 
but we are going to go up in elevation. And of course, it is snowing. So when we leave, there will be even more snow. Ah, uh, isn't this pretty? Um, I hope we don't have any trees down. And even worse, I hope we don't get any trees down after we go in. That has happened to me in the past. And it is always uh, a little alarming. Also note that this snow is very light. It's all fallen in the last 24 hours for the most part. And it uh, is nice and fluffy. So even if I do hit the underside, so long as the wheels can touch the ground, we should be fine. The place we're going is uh, pretty popular with off-roaders, so I won't be surprised if we see some uh, Jeeps or some other forerunners out here today. Uh, it's not really an ORV park, it's just forest roads, but it's such a nice location that I think everybody's just kind of drawn to it, especially when you get these first early snows of the season. I'm gonna stay in the tracks. That should be a little easier driving. No re reason to fight it, right? In the summertime, this is a really nicely paved stretch of road. It has a, a few areas where it's sunk and it's not great, but for the most part, it's a pretty nice stretch of road. So we got a tree down here. Ooh. trees heavy in snow causes a lot of breakage and down trees now the very first time I ever found this road was back in the early 2000s I was about to do the Alcan 5000 rally and I had a new car and I wanted to just kind of test it out in some forest roads so I ventured all the way out here didn't know what I was gonna find but I did find this road and I found this road right after a windstorm and the Forest Service had cut all the trees almost like it was a game of pole position. Basically, you could swerve through the trees. It was really cool. Kind of wish I had video of that. But, you know, if you don't explore, you don't find these fantastic locations. So far, doing great. I'm just in four high. I haven't changed anything here yet. My collision mitigation has shut down because uh, too much snow on the sensor in the front. But that's okay, there's nothing for me to run into out here anyway. Oh, we got a down tree. Oh boy. We're gonna uh, use the Jeep to uh, pull the tree out. That saves me about an hour. Yeah, <laughs> happy to help. Thanks so much. I get the feeling we're going to need this again. What you saw was a Honda minivan. Yes, that is what we just saved. And it was, uh, I, I'm seeing the scrape marks right here where he definitely went in, snow came, got out. But uh, it's a good thing he's leaving now because uh, it's only going to get worse starting to get a little deeper, a little slipperier. Still just in four high, there's no reason to change anything yet. And I don't have a lot of tools here in my toolbox. All I have is a track and hill descent control. That's it. No locking rear diff, no multi-terrain select system, none of that. You need to move up to the TRD models like the TRD off-road to get that. We also need to pay attention to time because it's going to start to get dark really early. Around 3.30 is when the light will start dimming 
uh, in the mountains here. So we need to make sure that we're out of the mountains by then. You don't want to be stuck in dark in a snowstorm in the mountains. That is actually dangerous. Um, and I, as much as I like to have fun and do things like this, I have my limits as to how much danger I'm going to put myself and my crew into. Uh, so there's that. It doesn't mean that this isn't, you know, already filled with folly, but eh, you know. On the front of this vehicle is the optional TRD skid plate. And I'm really glad they put it on here because it really helps me kind of slide across the snow here. It, it helps create a compact track down the middle. I think that's about a $400 option and I would recommend it for anybody looking at pretty much any level of 4Runner. Because if you have a 4Runner, you're going to do stuff like this. Even if you're not naturally inclined, I give it a year you're out here doing this stuff. Oh, it's getting deep, so deep. Oh, I'm starting to push snow now over the nose of the car as I'm hitting little puffs of soft stuff. So this is where the pavement ends. We're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna look at the conditions outside before we head on and there are no tracks going where I wanna go. It's important to have, you know, a clear area and so the way you do it is you engage snowblower mode, which basically is uh, H2 and where's my traction control? Turn that off. And then you basically just floor it, unless you're gonna slip, in which case you go to H4. <laughs> that was no fun. First thing we're doing here is we're actually looking in the manual to see where they want us to put chains. Nobody should put chains on a vehicle without actually consulting the documentation first. Given the weather conditions, I don't think we have any hope of making it all the way to the Evergreen Lookout. However, there's a halfway point called Jack Pass. That is our new destination. I've got chains on the Forerunner. We've aired down the Jeep Gladiator. I think it's time to go. While we were chaining up, a rig cut us a nice little path. It was a big Ram power wagon. So it's good to know that out here somewhere is a power wagon. If we get into trouble, he's got a winch in front. A winch, not wench. Common misunderstanding. With chains on the Forerunner and the Gladiator aired down, we pressed on into the woods. And in this situation, the Forerunner was really doing great. Granted, turning was more like steering a small boat with inputs suggesting direction more than demanding it, but I never really felt like I was going to get stuck. Now it's time to switch out to the Jeep to see how the aired down Falcon Mud traction tires compared in these conditions. We are now inside the Jeep. And uh, yeah, the interior, so much different. So I'm kind of curious how this feels. All terrain tires at 20 PSI versus chains on regular all seasons. This is nice. Of course, putting on chains is a pain. I love the rumble of this thing though, this Gladiator diesel, it sounds like you're driving a semi. Oh, power. Of course, one of the benefits of all terrains aired down is you don't have to worry about spinning your wheels. You know, with chains, you have to keep your speed down so that you don't damage the chains or damage your vehicle. Uh, but with all terrains, I mean, wow. <laughs> It's in four high right now, by the way. Uh, there's no other features enabled yet because just don't really need them. I have to say these wild peaks are not bad. They are mud and snow rated. They got big chonky blocks. They are basically as hard as hockey pucks when it gets really cold but you air them down and the chonkiness just woohoo! nice controlled slides. The mud traction tires were surprisingly decent in the snow. 
Granted, if we hit thick slush or ice, it probably would have been a different story, I expect. Now that I've driven the Jeep and I'm back in the 4Runner, I can feel that using chains has shortcomings, of course. Uh, you can get going, you can get moving, you can start and you can stop. Steering is a bit vague, especially because I don't have any chains on the front wheels, which is what they say in the documentation, do not put chains on the fronts. So I only have grip and whatnot in the back. And because of that, it's a little, yeah, steering can be problematic. Whereas with the Jeep, it has grip in the front and the back and equal amounts of it at that. We pressed on through the snow, getting ever closer to Jack Pass as the snow started to pile up. We even saw that power wagon again. This time he was winching himself out of a ditch. It was starting to feel like we were gonna make it after all, but then it was over. So it does appear as though this is the end of our line today. This tree probably just fell. It is important to note just how much snow was falling and how hairy the situation was becoming. Without a chainsaw, all it would take is one tree to lock us in overnight. We decided to turn around and regroup at the nearest crossroads. But first, we needed to turn these rigs around. This really emphasized just how long the Gladiator is. With a wheelbase of 137 inches, it's more than two feet longer than the Forerunner. This makes turning around on tight trails much more of an issue for the long Jeep. As for the mid-size Forerunner, it's surprisingly nimble. Yes, this cooler and slide-out tray are standard on the Trail Edition Forerunner. Normally, I don't go for features like this, but I have to say, it sure made tailgating easy today. The latches even doubled as bottle openers, and yeah, that's root beer. After a quick lunch, we headed out of the woods. Time to wrap up this adventure by checking in with the Jeep to see how economy is working out. Okay, so we went into the woods, we had some fun, we drove basically about the same. What's your MPGs? Currently at 15.2. I'm at 10.2. Compared to the diesel Jeep, I think that's actually pretty good because you're not paying the premium that you do with the diesel Jeep. Even though we didn't go that deep into the forest, just this little adventure has given me just a real love for the 4Runner. I used to own one. I want to buy another one. This just reaffirms the fact, even though I've driven so many cool modern vehicles in the last few years, heck, in the last few months, there's something about this vehicle that just feels like home. For me, it's just a more comfortable and practical vehicle. I can certainly see the appeal of the Gladiator, and I don't doubt that Jeep fans will find it the better of these two vehicles. But for me, and perhaps for many buyers, the practicality of the 4Runner combined with its solid off-road abilities really makes the Toyota the better choice on an adventure like the one we had today. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Which of these would you buy? Post a comment below. Also, be sure to like and share this video. We make them for you, and we hope you enjoy them. Until next time, drive safe.